Hello everybody, this is me Amin. And this is Alex. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. It's Thursday the 25th of August and in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, something that happened over the weekend of this week uh, while we were recording this. Um, a very prominent doctor over the weekend got scammed uh, over 13,000 ringgit. Now the question is, um, okay, before we go into the question, the issue right now is scams is like, this is just too much, man. Yep. I think almost every week, we at least write one story about a scam. Overnight, over the weekend, while she was sleeping, she lost 13,000 ringgit. And he, she was questioning, like, okay, uh, for banks to allow transfers to happen, uh, they have, there has to be like a two-factor authentication. Yep. Uh, what we know of as OTP, one-time password. So you request for the bank uh, that you want to transfer money out or you want to make a payment. The bank will then send you a password to a secure phone that's presumably yours. And then you key in that password and that that password unlocks, uh, sorry, that PIN number unlocks the funds and it will go out. So the question is, how did a transaction happen without the need of an OTP? Should we be concerned? And is OTP safe? Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to talk about like, okay, what are the tips and tricks or or, or how how did we think that this scam happened and how can you avoid from being scammed out of your money in this uh, this specific way, in this way or in general? Yep. Okay, so what happened over the weekend? Okay, so uh, as we mentioned just now, uh, so the victim is uh, Dr. Uh, Rafida Abdullah. Mm. Uh, she's based, She's actually attached to um, uh, the Ministry of Health. Mm. So she complained over the weekend that um, she lost 13,000 ringgit over three transactions that were conducted in the early hours of the morning, like mm. 2, 2 to 2.30 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And then she was like, she was like, what the heck? What happened? How could how could the funds just transfer out just like that? Mm. And she said that she claims that she hasn't received any OTP. Mm. So how could this happen? Because we all know that if you want to transfer funds, mm. there's always that additional layer of security, right? Yeah. So if let's say first of all, um, someone needs to have your username and password. That's already one layer. Like how did they get her username and password? Mm. And secondly, for that transaction to be completed, how did they do it without OTP? Mm. So she posted about that. So uh, apparently, and then she also made a police report, report to uh, the to CMB Bank itself, and and she said that um, in the next follow up post, she mentioned that um, CMB actually contacted her, and they told her that they believe that she has clicked on a link that was sent a few days ago, which enabled an activation of another iPhone six that's linked to her account, mm. and and she was like. Cannot be. She also uh ran frustrating. Like, how could this be possible? No, she's been using this for a long time. Yep. It's not a malware because mm. she's using an iPhone as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for those who don't know, um, if you're using Android, uh, this this malware is going around. So what they do is the scammers or mm. hackers, whatever, they will send you links to download APK files, mm. and these files are like malware. Mm-hmm. They sit inside your phone, and they could actually sniff your or read your messages and stuff like that. Read messages. Uh uh, key, key uh, read your key uh, strokes uh, yes. and everything. Yeah, yeah. so she, on, she's using iPhone, so it mm. should be safe. Mm. So she also expressed like, how could this happen? You know, and she said that you know it's not right for CMB to pin the blame on her mm. because shortly after she posted that on mm. social media, venting her frustration about CMB, uh, CMB put out you know typical PSA like, oh, first of all, you uh, you want to remind all customers, you know, do not send OTP or share OTP with people or like yep. the usual stuff. You know, yep. like don't share, keep it private, mm. do what it takes to keep yourself secure, and she. I think she finally frustrated like, hey, how, 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 what's this response? It looks like the bank is blaming her yep. instead of taking responsibility. Yep. Mm. Because from her view, it's like, I've done whatever I need to do to keep my account safe. I didn't share OTP, but yet my money is deducted. Mm. And now by doing this announcement, it looks like you're blaming me. Mm. So how is this possible? Because obviously the bank, they cannot address the issue uh, directly. Um, we reach out to them. They also cannot comment directly. Mm. But in the same time period, I think the past few weeks, uh, we are aware that there are uh, people who receive funny messages mm. that pretend to be CIMB. So how is this done is that uh, I, we, we have a couple of examples. Mm. One of it is that someone sent a message like this, Ringgit Malaysia Zero, we're going to show on the screen, yep. Ringgit Malaysia Zero, CIMB, your account is abnormal and will be locked. Mm. In order not to affect your normal use, click the link to verify your abnormality. <laughs> and then they give you a link so it uh. could be a weird URL that looks like CMB, uh. some quick bitly link. And because we've seen um, other users yep. tweeting to CMB, hey, is this message legit? Yep. And CMB also uh, responded to them, no, this is not from us. Please ignore this. Do not click the link and please be extra careful. Yep. So there has been this thing that's going around. Uh, around. Mm. People are sending SMS, 
trying to trick people that oh their account's been locked mm-hmm. and please click here to log in. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time of recording, obviously these links are not working anymore; they've been mm-hmm. disabled. So I can say that this is very similar to the touch and go scam which we've seen earlier on. Okay. So remind uh, viewers and, and listeners what what is this touch and go scam? Yeah. So last month, um, uh, there was um this scam that's going around. Mm. So people are receiving SMS mm. that pretend to be government. Because there's something called SMS spoofing. So what happens that they send SMS that's from GOV. Mm. Remember during the pandemic, we received a lot of SMS from GOV. Yep. So it's sent from GOV mm. and saying that, oh, um, my suggestor is giving you COVID-19 financial relief of 800 ringgit. Mm. Uh, click here to redeem it from Touch and Go e-wallet. <laughs> so it gives a URL yep. that goes to a page with a Touch and Go lookalike. It looks like Touch and Go. Legit. At a glance. It looks yep. exactly the same. Mm-hmm. The same. So, so you key in your phone number, mm. you key in your six-digit password, mm. And then they ask, they request for OTP, mm. and that's where you key in OTP password. And w- because we know it's fake, because I pick, put a fake phone number, I put a fake password. Yeah. It still goes through and asking for OTP. <laughs> so, so they just want the OTP number. Yes. Uh-huh. So basically, a patient look legit to genuinely, genuinely trick people to log in, mm-hmm. and from the behind the scenes to get information and try to log in on their on their own device. And we also seen a similar scam with TMB because. These people are quite smart, lah. Like, very contextual because remember yeah. the TMB outage. So they follow the trends. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So remember the TMB outage. <laughs> the so, one where half of Malaysia was gone, right? Yeah, in, okay. West, in West Malaysia. Uh-huh. So they say, oh, uh, the message reads like, oh, TMB, oh, um, the the TMB is giving out a uh, compensation for your t- <laughs> TMB blackout. Oh, because they know people want compensation. Yes, as credited, it, it will be credited to a t- uh, touch and go e wallet. Uh-huh. Click here to log in, mm. and goes to again a legit looking. Um, touch and go e-wallet page a convincing looking yes. touch and go e-wallet page and yeah. then you just key in your f- your details ask for OTP yep. just put in the OTP yeah so I believe it's a similar case with this CMB thing but how how would it work though because you know um, I believe all OTPs have like a time limit like correct I think about 4 minutes yep. uh, the most I can see is 4 minutes sometimes it's 1 minute or 2 minutes so yep. what I mean if if uh, CIMB says that they detected a uh, uh, anomaly mm-hmm. for uh, Dr. Rafida's account mm-hmm. uh, that she logged in or, or a, a, a separate iPhone was logged in mm-hmm. like days before. Mm-hmm. How is that OTP still valid? Uh, because I'm not a CMB user, but mm-hmm. I feel that because I think most of the online banks they try to move away from SMS, they mm-hmm. go, they do, they have something called secure tech. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's actually similar to OTP, but it's sent to your app yep. directly. Mm-hmm. So. I suspect if let's say assuming that she has been fished mm. similar way mm. because I assume because it's not shared in her her social posts. Yep. So assuming that she had this message and mm. she clicked the link thinking that she's actually logging into CMB Bank, mm. maybe th- with the information that she provide, the scammers register Swap the numbers. They register a new phone uh-huh. and then enable secure attack on that device. So that phone can authorize its own transaction. So I Okay. I, I feel that's the possibility. I, I, that's the most obvious one. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's a few things that need to happen uh need to happen for this scam to to work. Yep. Uh maybe she did not try to initiate any transactions that require OTP because she will mm-hmm. immediately notice that hey, OTPs are not coming in her number mm-hmm. into her phone. Mm-hmm. Um yep. that, that that would be like one indicator. Yep. Yeah. So okay, in this case, right, she's saying that she she she's she's done everything, her account is secure and she's blaming CIMB. Yeah. She said that CMB, you know, the yes, security labs on their side, they're not doing enough to prevent this from happening. So who is to blame actually? Hard to tell because okay, because I don't know exactly how what kind of transactions, but typically if there's a transaction being made and there's an OTP that's been inter- entered correctly mm. that verifies that you are the one doing the transaction. Yeah. It's similar to uh, credit it's like, cards. It's similar to like just giving your money. Yeah, it's like right? similar to credit cards, yeah. right? You know, like when you go to a shop, you swipe mm. the card, you enter the six-digit pin. Yep. That six-digit pin is not to protect you, it's to protect mm. the merchant. So that the merchant will say, no, this you is... You the pin. You entered the yeah, pin, it's correct. Pin. Yep. So you are the customer, you're liable for it. Yep, yep, so yep, that's yep, like yep. a verification process. And did... I don't know whether you know or whether she mentioned in her social media did she try to reverse the trans- transaction did she try to 
talk to Sammy to say if they can reverse the transaction because mm. I know that transaction has like a window of validity yep. and if you can act within like I don't know 24 hours or 4 mm-hmm. hours whatever that, that window is you mm-hmm. can reverse the transaction Um, I, I believe she did she, she because she made a report to Sammy mm-hmm. so I'm pretty sure that they are trying to get the money back mm-hmm. of course this kind of thing is not guaranteed mm-hmm. so uh, we have no updates on that mm-hmm. like usually for credit cards um, you can there's some sort of protection which they can reverse there's, there's, uh, oh yeah okay. but we take time la. and then there's also PIDM so can she claim under PIDM for this no 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 PIDM only protects you if your bank chaps up or if the bank bankrupts yes <laughs> correct <laughs> if the bank erupts uh, yes oh is that where the word comes from it's like the bank erupted and then it became is bankrupt. it I don't know no idea <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing la. so yeah I know okay for me I think I know who is to blame I think it's the regulators and the lawmakers that's th- those are the people that's to blame I feel that you know a lot of, a lot of parties need to be responsible as well lah. It's not just single point because right now, it it your whole the whole thing looks like is you were blaming the victims, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that can be done on the banks, can be done on the on the regular side. Like on for example, okay. yeah, like for example, you're going to register another phone number. How mm. often would you register another phone number, right? I mean, it's difficult. Another phone? It's difficult to say, right? Because there's so many things. Maybe I just bought a new phone. Maybe I. I lost my phone. I think mm-hmm. uh, maybe I just wanted to s- change my account or there's so many reasons. Yeah, but you want to know, right? So I think the very least is they should send a message, a new device has registered, iPhone 6, for example. At least a notification and that a new device has been registered to your account. Yes. Then you should know, oh, what's going on? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense because if I'm like on Facebook, for example, yep. and I logged in uh, in another state or in another country, yes. all of my Facebook apps on all of my devices tells me, hey, are you this is this you because we yes. get, we did we detected another uh, device being logged in uh, or something logged in that in an, in a location that you've don't are uh, not really in and sometimes even tell you there's an attempt even though it's not yeah, successful yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 ah okay I think that's legit yeah okay so I guess one of the okay okay not a single point of uh point of blame point, yeah. point to blame here but I don't believe that the victim is the one to blame. Like, I think there should be some compensation because uh, I think banks should be accountable for 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 people being fraud under yep. their name. Mm. So it's not to say like it's a love scam or whatever, yep. but if it's a scam like this, we this this category is a phishing scam, phishing right? Phishing scam, I would say where, phishing. Yeah. yeah, where people, where the scammers kind of like bait and switch you to make a scam website looks legit and then mm-hmm. you freely key in your details and yep. suddenly it's not. Yep. This is one of the oldest, uh, most basic scam uh, that was done like in, in the early days of internet transaction because yep. it was the easiest to do. Yep. And then uh, security features get more sophisticated, right? So I think one of the strongest one is the two-factor auto- uh, authentication. authentication. Yep. Um, obviously, we keep telling people, hey, you know, have a super secure password, have a password manager, Uh, I uh, if you have a uh, two-factor aut- uh, authentication in place, you're pretty solid because it takes a lot of uh, effort to like really uh, steal that uh, ability for you to get the OTP. Yep. One one way is to like really hijack your phone number, and and and, and, and it, it can be done. Yeah, it can so, be done. Uh, one way is for a. Uh, Uh, impersonator to go to Maxis. For, so let's say it's an operator, right? Okay, I wouldn't say Maxis. Any let's, operator. Uh, so let's say go to any operator. Yes. So let's say I, my, I, I subscribe to operator A. Mm-hmm. So uh, my impersonator will just go to operator A and then say, hey, uh, I lost my SIM card. Can you give me a new one? And if it's your lucky day or if that person is just being lazy or whatever or if you have somebody on the inside that does not require uh, ID yes. to verify that it is, it is me, It it is quite easily for you to get a SMS. Uh, sorry, a SIM card. So basically, they take over your SIM card. Yeah, yeah and that way, if if we apply it to uh, Dr. Rafida's case, uh, she does not even have to share her OTP into the system at all because the OTP will freely go to an to a to her number. Yeah. But because her SIM card has been deactivated because a new SIM card with her number has been activated, it's legit, right? Yeah, because they got the username and password. Yeah. So by the time you deactivate her SIM card. Yeah. You have full control because yep. there is no chance for her to change the password anymore. Yep. And you can log in, and once the when you can receive the OTP messages, you can yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah. So coming back to the CMB thing, I think there were, I I I'm in the I'm of the impression that a number of uh, security features are not or, or gates lah at least are not in place because if I try to change my phone number, 
let's say if I try, okay, I use Samsung Pay, right? And yep. I register uh, my cards on Samsung Pay, right? Yep. Uh, Maybank only allows maybe three phones mm-hmm. to be registered on Samsung Pay. Mm-hmm. So when I swap phones, I have to deactivate one phone. Yep. And then and then and then only then I can fill up that slot with 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 my new phone. And sometimes like if you change phones without removing the cards on old phone, yep. they might not let you um add cards automatically. You need yep. to call the bank to to tell them like what's going on. Yeah. Yep. So in this case, if I change the phone number in my settings mm-hmm. to allow the scammer to receive the OTP, mm-hmm. there should be like a notification to her, right? Yeah, that's what I assume. So I don't know. The thing is, we're not sure whether she has a message. Maybe she did, but she's not telling the full story. Yeah. So I think the very least that I feel that bank should notify these kind of major changes. Mm-hmm. Like if someone changed a number or yep. someone, you know, uh, change uh, log in in another device mm. that's like very odd, mm. that should ra- that should raise some red flags. Like, hey, how come you're logging to another new phone? Yeah, I um, think I think she's not to blame. Number one, I think uh, the bank, CMB, I mean, throw an olive. Uh, extend an olive uh, branch, branch uh, to this person and you know save your face and say lah you know uh, okay this is or do it privately or something I don't know mm-hmm. uh, be the bigger person because the scam is done under your name mm-hmm. I know it opens a floodgate where people claim that this happened but I believe that you have if you are if you say that you have the security and all that I, I believe that you have the means to really go deep and investigate what what goes on. Yep. And it can be on a case-by-case basis. But at the very least, people are assured that CMB is safe. Yeah, at least do something to prove to, to, you know, you need to convince people that, you know, the platform is safe. Because right now, people are a bit worried like, hey, how come someone who claimed that didn't receive OTP, mm. but yet the transaction go through? Yeah, that's scary. That's scary. Because, okay, the, you remember like how Touch & Go had a similar issue before. Mm. There's also phishing cases with Touch & Go. Mm. But luckily for Touch & Go, they have this like a um, protection guarantee. Mm. So a couple of victims, victims that which we report earlier, mm. they were protected by this safeguard. So Touch & Go actually go and compensate for these transactions. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, so for me, I think uh, CMB, I mean, while the doctor lost 13,000 ringgit, um, I think CMB has more to lose here because yes. already people associate CMB with a lot of problems with banking anyway. Yes. Yep. Uh, the app is not that great. The online mm-hmm. banking is not that great. Um, and then now a prominent doctor has said that, oh, you, how can transfers happen without OTP? And CMB can go and say, no, technically that didn't happen. Yep. Uh, sh- you can say whatever, but yep. the public opinion, if the public opinion has already been shaped, you run you run the costs and the 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 loss in terms of okay we got to repair our reputation yep. we got to like re-educate the the public and now now she's she's saying oh she's going to stop the she's going to she said selamat tinggal cmb yep. i think she's going to change her account or whatever yeah she said she's a loyal customer for more than 30 years mm. and because of this incident you know bye bye yeah the bank. yeah uh, okay so one one of the responsibilities obviously is CMB. I think CMB can do a lot more uh, yep. to like really make make this better for the brand rather than her. Yep. The money I think she can get back, right? So she can make another thirteen thousand. I think not not a problem. Uh, but CMB, the reputation loss the and the customer loss is more expensive than this. Yeah, the reputational loss. I feel yeah, yeah. yeah. because. More pe- because if you don't answer the question like how did this happen what are you doing to solve this yeah. people are going to be scared like shit should I withdraw my money out from the bank now or what yeah I mean yeah that's that's true and already I don't know uh, are you guys CMB users if you are you know, let us know in the comment section below what do you think of CMB is it secure uh, let us know in the comment section below um, but already in my mind I'm not a CMB user but my, well. my, my wife is and you know I, and when I show her what what Maybank to you can do and what the CMB right uh, I mean they just launched an app but even yeah. the app is not full featured to, yeah. to be fair yeah it's still too new but the online is like really dated lah yeah the website is dated the, the capabilities and yeah. all that mm. so already CMB has that reputation the other party that I believe is responsible is I think the regulators and the government I think not enough is being done to educate I know. I know people who are in the government and people who are running the regulation, uh, who are in the regulatory body will say, hey, I mean, come on lah, you know, we've done tons of campaigns. We've spent X number of money, blah, 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 mm. blah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for doing that. My next question, if you come back to me and say that is, okay, what are the success uh, criteria? What, what are the matrix or numbers or, or the indicators that you look at to say that X number of people have already been educated about scams in the country. Oh, because hundred percent people say I will not get scammed. 
<laughs> like I'm, I will never be murdered. Yeah, that's why I said don't get killed. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm not gonna get in an accident. Yeah, see, I told them don't get killed. Yeah, <laughs> see, I done my part. No, <laughs> uh, I think it's not enough. And uh, obviously, uh, it's like a broken record, right? Like okay, normally these things happens, right? What the banks and financial institutions do is oh, don't share OTP, don't do this, you know, yes. don't don't reveal a password. Uh-huh. Yeah, the everyone does that. I'm not stupid enough to share my OTP. Yep. I don't think all these victims. Intentionally shared the OTP to strangers. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, but yet this thing happens, and obviously more needs to be done, and it's just not happening in Malaysia. So one example is uh Singapore. So mm. there's also a similar incident. Like there's a SMS phishing scam. So yep. customers get SMS like you know si- similar lah. Scare that they oh account something wrong. Mm. Please log in here. To mm. Give the link. Mm. So apparently like 400 over customers were affected, mm. and even, I think 469 customers were affected, and eventually. Uh, OCBC. Uh, they announced that you know they provide they they're going to compensate bad customers. So mm. they they provide like thirteen point seven million Sing dollars mm. or equivalent to, uh, I think like close to forty million ringgit yep. as a goodwill payout to the victims of phishing scam attacks. Yeah, keyword goodwill. Yes. Right. Yep. So why can't CMB put out a goodwill payout of thirteen thirteen a measly 13,000 ringgit? I know thirteen thousand ringgit is a lot for a lot of people, but to the bank to CMB. That's nothing, man. Yeah, but then again, I know it, it's gonna open the floodgate. You know, yeah, it's gonna open. It's gonna be more cases of this. So they didn't do more. That re- that which means which means that they need to put more urgency to tackle this problem because yes. it's gonna happen every day. Yes, be make this a landmark to say, okay, CMB with the new app and everything, we have security, we have privacy, we have whatever, we and we one hundred percent stand behind our systems. Yeah, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna pay this money, mm-hmm. and for and, and not to say like oh. We welcome any other cases, but if they do, you set up a task force to look into the 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 cases. Yes, uh, you can. There can be a process. Look, um, I'm sure there are tons of smart people in CMB that can do this. Yep. Not a problem. It's just a matter of whether they want to do it or not. So again, back to uh, the other party that's responsible for this, the government. You mentioned that they 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 are like a broken record, and I'm sure that who who whoever runs a message. Um, Public relations will know that there is this thing called fatigue. Uh, when you run the same messages too frequently, uh, uh, for too long, people will just uh, it becomes a blind spot. People don't yes, care indeed. about it anymore. Yep. Uh, so I'm not saying that we should change the message, but I think the methodology, um, the way that we do we do all these things should change. Regulators could also um tell banks to like put in a stop uh a gate in place where if a transfer is going to happen for X amount of money, um, you know, you could put a thing, say, okay, be aware that, are you sure that you want to make this transfer? Please double check that this is not a scam, whatever, whatever. Yep. Although it wouldn't apply in this case because the person that is the victim wasn't aware that the transfer was being done. Yep. But it could save an, uh, 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 victims of the love scam, the TikTok scam, uh, so many web, where the scammers volunt- uh, ask the victims to voluntarily send money over, and mm-hmm. they do. Yeah. And the problem with that is, most of the time, the investigators will say, look, you legitimately send the money over. And if it's love scam, you cannot get, I mean, it's difficult to get the money back because, hey, come on, it's like, it's like if I have a, 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 a girlfriend and I willingly send my money to my girlfriend, I cannot say that it's been stolen. Yep. No matter how my girlfriend like lies to me and say I'm handsome or I'm 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 gorgeous or whatever, it's difficult to fight that. Yeah. So that's one. And then um I think the government should also like look at scams very seriously. I'm not saying that they're not, but perception wise, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. They should do more and then also they do should do more and also uh, educate customers in a different way. Because you're telling the same story over and over again, though, don't share OTP. I mean Everyone has heard that a thousand <laughs> times. The moment you see the PSA, okay, your mind just switched mm, off. Mm. I mean, because I think one thing that's um, new here is that the sophistication in terms of fishing mm. is like top notch right mm, now. Mm, mm, a lot of people don't realize they got fish mm. because it's, it's so convincing right now. Yep. And like we said, right? Like for example, if they send these messages like to one million people, I think most people will see are ah, this fake. Mm. But a lot of people think it's legit mm. and click in this follow instructions and then when the money is gone, like what just happened? I didn't lock anywhere else. I only lock lock into the official bank. Yep. But it's not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It it costs the scammer like nothing to send all these messages, mm-hmm. and for them to get thirteen thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand a day. Yep. Across ten days, that's a lot of money already. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what what I wanted to say is, I think the government can, 
like really set the example to say just make a simple statement after this case to say like okay we've seen the statistics and uh, we see scam cases are rising and uh, we see this seriously this is what we've done this is how much we've spent and this is what more we're going to do yeah but we're not seeing that yeah so now we have angry people like like this doctor and other victims they don't know who to blame and it looks like nothing's being done and yeah the banks are not doing anything the, the banks are just busy defending themselves the regulatory gov- and government bodies are not doing anything and then you say oh you know has there been an example of where the government has stepped up to like really make it secure well to answer your question <laughs> Our favorite country, not so favorite country, <laughs> but they set a good example. Uh, uh. It's Singapore. So, like, remember, we, okay, we mentioned about the OCBC phishing scam, right? Mm. Where about close to 100 people got scammed. Yep. So, following that incident, right, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, so basically the Singapore's equivalent to our bank in government Malaysia, mm. they introduced several steps to prevent this, at least through to prevent this from happening. Several measures. Measures, yep. yeah. Mm. So the first one is removable of clickable links in emails SMS sent to customers yep. because here's the thing because getting Re- SMS removal yeah removed yeah. Yeah. links so yeah. when let's say if banks want to communicate to customers right, do not send links mm-hmm. so at least give that put in mindset that, okay banks will never send you links yep. if you need to check something you got notified mm. you need to go to the website mm. by typing into the address yes. bar or open the official app mm-hmm. so that gives at least you educate customers that okay banks will never send you links yep. if someone send you an email with a link mm. from bank mm. coming to a bank mm. that's definitely a email red flag. sms whatsapp whatever that yep. claims that oh i'm from cmb mm. we're saying uh, anomaly in your transaction today can you please click through the link so that we can verify the transaction yep. do not click on the link Yes. Never click on the link. Yeah, so Singapore's doing that for a start. So they mm. mandated all banks to remove links from their communications to retail customers. Mm. And number two is that they asked banks to reduce the threshold for transaction notification mm. to customers. I think people see it's a high amount. Like normally they will send you SMS if it's high amount. Mm. So now they tell the banks to just, you know, set it lower. Mm. At least hundred year hundred sing dollars you get notified anyway. Mm. Mm. It's annoying, yes, but at least it's, it's something that the customers will be informed. Mm. The third one is which is interesting is delay of at least twelve hours before activation of new soft token to mobile device. Yeah, that's very key. That's yeah. very important, actually. That could have prevented this from happening, this yeah. case from having, so, happening. Mm. So let's say another phone registered to your account, right? Mm. At least you have that time to delay it. Yep. And also, as a customer, right, probably you get notification that, hey, a new device has registered to your account mm. and you have time to act on it. Mm. You can maybe, there's an option for you to remove that device or to cancel that authorization. Yep. So that could have prevented this from happening in the mm-hmm, first place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also another one is notification to existing mobile number or email registered with the bank whenever there's a request to change a numbers, a customer's mobile number or, e- or email address. Mm. So this is quite critical as well. Like we mentioned just now, right? Mm. Any changes that's so major, mm. the customers get informed first. Mm. Yeah. So, and, you know, uh, reading from that, right, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the managing director said in a statement, you know, because of the rise of scams and after implementing these uh, measures, uh, he says that, you know, MAS is deeply concerned about the recent spate of scams and the financial losses suffered by victims. The threat of scams will not go away, but we can reduce our vulnerabilities and we will ensure that digital banking remains secure, efficient and trusted. Um, and f- as far as I can recall, in my recent memory, I have not seen uh, our... Um, a bank, a head of bank, a head of bank negara say anything. Uh, you know, CIMB has not said anything. Yeah, uh, just except for the PSA. The government has not said anything. So no, nobody wants to be accountable. It seems to me that like, even if even if you don't know, but putting a statement like this says that, okay, we are looking into it at yeah. the very least. It's a serious matter and yeah. they are taking this very seriously and yeah. they're doing what they can to address the issue. Yeah, because it seems to me not saying anything means like the scammers are free to do whatever they want. Yeah, it's like, woohoo! We, yeah. we can get away with it. Yeah, you know like what? such a prominent person gonna scam. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Uh, our Prime Minister, Telegram, gonna hack. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> no no issues. Got what? The government's uh. gonna come up with anti-hacking app. You know? <laughs> That's maybe for another episode. <laughs> Uh, the anti-hacking app, right? You know yes. what's going to happen? There's going to be like a phishing website of the anti-hacking app <laughs> and, and this thing is going to happen again. And then you're gonna like, okay, you know, to subscribe to the full um, full version of the anti-hacking app, or please, click, uh, yeah. please pay. Or click here to redeem the pro version. <laughs> For free. For free. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to open Lord. another can of worms. So, yeah. yeah, it's just worrying that, you know, scams are happening and then, you know, nothing's been done. And then mm. we talked about this uh, 
in in land in great lands. I think right? we we've been talking about it too regularly, lah. I'm really concerned about it. Even like for example, Facebook scams, right? Like you know, like for as a platform, the ad scams. Yeah, and right. then like Facebook launched campaigns about turn up scam, don't be uh, scam, uh. and then it looks like they're pushing the onus on consumers. Like, oh, you yeah. must be spy enough not to click on dodgy links, yeah. but yet they approve dodgy Facebook pages, mm. running dodgy ads, promoting mm. scams. Mm. So it's like, come on, everyone has the responsibility, but yet it looks like. The industry and the authorities are pushing the blame to, to consumers. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So, um, I think that that pretty much wraps up today's show. Is uh, I just, I guess we can't remind you enough to like be really careful with online transactions. Um, don't click through any links that you get from SMS, especially if they're from banks. Okay, I know, uh, I had this discussion with Alex. I know some applications and some platforms still yep. do send mess, uh, links through SMS. Um, Airbnb, for example. Amazon, for example. I have them in my phone and I do click through and they do go through uh, to the legit um, websites. website. And if you do click through and if there are some banks that still send um links through SMSs. There is a way to check whether the website is secure or not. Uh, there is a small lock icon on the top left corner of the URL bar. address bar, right? Yeah, and also look at the address bar as well. Look at the website name. Yeah. yeah. So one example of the message that one of our team members got from CM, from the, the CMB fake, fake CMB. Fisher yeah. is a C-I-N-N-B. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dot <laughs> net or something dot u yes, or something like yeah. that yeah there's a word that looks like cmb but yeah. it's not so they put the n and n together to make it look like cm cimb yeah and for them to blatantly do that when we look at it it's like okay you know it's so funny that it it can be a joke yeah but still people fall victim to it it's not it's not about whether that person is educated or smart or whatever, there's so many situations where you're in a hurry. You're in panic. You're panicking or yep. you're, it was a mistake, you mm. know, that you fall into that. Nobody would would willingly and wittingly want to be scammed and yep. lose their money. Nobody wants to do that. So I don't think it's right to blame the victim. So my tips are, number one, uh, be careful of the links that you get via SMS. If it's from banks, I think 100% just avoid them. If you have to, give the banks a call or key in the URL yourself. Uh, if you do click through or somebody clicks through or you want to educate a, a family member or a friend, make sure that they look at the URL bar. At the top left corner, there's a lock icon. If the lock icon is not there or there's a big question mark or a big exclamation mark, yep. that website is suspect. Don't do any transactions. Don't key in any details in that website. Period. Yep. Uh, number three is uh, keep your phone secure. Uh, you know, install like really, really good passwords for your phone so that they don't uh, become unlocked uh, easily. Use complicated passcodes. I know some people do one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. or yeah. six zeros. You think you're smart. I mean, okay, I'm sorry, lah. <laughs> this one, you think you're smart. We've we've written a number of articles about like the most popular passwords, but I'm still surprised that a lot of people still use the most popular passwords. Yeah. And hackers, they are professionals. They know how to do this, lah. If yep. If they ask, if they take the effort to create a website that looks identical to that, yeah, passwords like nothing to them. Yeah, and okay, so so two more bonus tips that's not related to this, but I think you must do is number one, install a password manager. Uh, Alex and I are using one password. This is not like a what's the word I'm looking for endorsement. endorsement, but uh, we I've been using it for a few years, legit good and cheap. So uh, if you're looking for one, one password is, is one or you can use whatever. The free password managers on your Google Chrome or on your Apple. Yeah, Apple yeah. Apple and Google yeah. has free ones but I think they're not as feature packed as the one that we, the, the paid ones. Yep. Uh, so that's why uh, we moved to one password. Number, the last one is VPN. So a lot of uh, people, I'm surprised mm. that a lot of people that I talk to, they don't think twice about logging on to free Wi-Fi. Oh, it's yeah, scary as hell yeah. to be honest it's yes. scary as hell I when I have to when I have to log on to a, a free Wi-Fi right I will be sweating bricks man I feel so dirty yeah. <laughs> because you don't know who, who's on the same network I, right I feel like yeah. going into like a like a dark alley yes you, you know yeah correct uh, so install a VPN uh, you don't have to use it all the time but when there is a time that you have to log on to a free Wi-Fi, let's say you're traveling or you're in a hotel and you or cafe, yeah, yeah, and you need to, you need to log into the free Wi-Fi to 
to pay for your phone or whatever just in case lah your phone kena bad you cannot yes. you have no access you pay bills you're yeah, not yeah, in line yeah 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 or your internet is super slow and what's available is only the free wifi yep. you sometimes you have to it's a necessity but have a vpn so that people cannot check what you do while you are logged on to the free wifi here's the scary part with free wifi right i can basically set up my android phone Uh, and call it. Let's say I'm in Starbucks, right? I can set up it to be a free Wi-Fi yep. and call it Starbucks free, and people can come and log in to my phone, and I can have a software or I can have it uh, linked up to my computer to know what people are sending across the internet through my Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can sniff the packets and you can get something out of it. Yeah, I yep. can get phone numbers, uh, messages if it's un- encrypted. So if it's through WhatsApp, it's fine. Yeah. But you know, whatever. If you send through a unsecure website. I yeah. can I can read it. Yeah, that's why I also I've tried to avoid uh, free Wi-Fi as much as possible mm. because basically the first dependence is I rather hotspot to my own phone first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I try to do that. Yeah, yeah. unless you really cannot, like, uh. the line is bad. All right, use free fi- Wi-Fi, but on VPN. Yeah, yeah, VPN, 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 VPN. Yes. Okay, so if you're wondering, uh, I don't know what you're using. I'm using Express VPN. Also, it's not an endorsement, but. I've been using it for a few uh, for a while now. Uh, easy, convenient, and uh, they usually have discounts. So yeah. yeah, I'm using NordVPN, and I got it like a pretty good discount when I buy like three years one shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So doesn't matter actually. Uh, I think all of the VPN providers are ubiquitous. Just get a legit and good one. Oh, which reminds me, right? When uh. you want to get this VPN. Make sure you download from the official website because there are scams on Facebook promoting VPNs. Uh huh. And it leads to a dodgy oh website. One of it recently, which, which we reported, is uh. Proton VPN. Because I saw an ad on Facebook. Uh. Oh, Proton VPN for free. Uh. They do offer a free account, uh-huh. but this advertisement is linked to a fake website. It's a phishing. It's a it's phishing. A, yes, yes, yes. Yes. And you download VPN. And worst part is you download these apps thinking that you'd be more secure. Uh. Actually, you're putting your data at risk. Yes. And again, Facebook again. See why Facebook allows these ads. Yep. All right. Um, it's that part of the show again where we respond to your comments. So we're going to respond to. Uh, one comment from our last. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, it's about the iMessage scam, the iMessage TikTok scam. So we got a we got a comment from Ar- Aristotle Re- Ruidera. Sorry if I butchered your name. And uh, what what did what does it say, Alex? Oh, he says, uh, no need to disable iMessage lah. Just disable receiving messages on iMessage via email. You can go to settings, message, uh, send and receive, and untick your email. So I, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's a good tip actually because based on what we're seeing, like the TikTok recruitment scam, mm. they all send by email. So mm. if you just disable the remove your email from your iMessage, uh, that should do the trick. You should not re- be receiving these messages. But your iMessage through phone number still works. Mm. Okay, hopefully the scammers don't use your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hope uh, we've been helpful. Uh, you know, I hope the good doctor gets her money back, uh, yep. and I really hope CMB will do something. Uh, noble lah. Yeah. When it comes to the to things like this, and I hope you guys have been informed uh, with uh, the tips and tricks about not being scammed, and stay safe, everybody. So if you are interested, you can also listen to this uh, show on podcast. We are available on podcast. Just look for Let's Talk About Sorry Chin Chow, and we are available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. If you are listening to us on uh, podcast, give us a five star rating because that that helps the show. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the show, and don't forget to forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, if this topic uh, uh, is something that interests you or resonates with you, and you have an opinion or something to talk about, put them in the comment section below. We'll be more than happy to hear what you have to say. Similarly, if you're listening to us on podcast, you can also drop us a voice note uh, at. Let's talk about at soyachincha.com. And we'll be more than happy to listen to them or, and reply to them and even publish them on our next episode if it's uh, super interesting or insightful. All right, that's uh, that's about it. This is me, Amin. And this is Alex. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.